everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, yes, Topaz Mask AI. This uh, episode is called Setting Up Mask AI for Maximum Performance. I've had some uh, viewers had some questions about Mask AI, like how do you set it up properly? And I want you to be able to get the most out of Mask AI. It is a super powerful program, and I love it, as you know. So I'm going to show you my recommendations for setting up Topaz Mask AI so you can take full use of it and speed up your workflow and have a much, much better experience with it. Again, it's a great piece of software. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm going to set up Mask AI from uh, Photoshop, but you could do it from the standalone as well. But I mainly work out of Photoshop, and I know a lot of you do work out of Photoshop, so I'm going to show you the Photoshop way of setting this up. Now, right now, I have Mask AI set up to its default settings, the way you would get it when you first purchase Mask AI. So right now, you'll notice I just have a background layer here. Now, say I wanted to mask out this uh, the background from this cat here. So I have my background layer, and it is locked. And if I come up here to Filter, and go to Topaz Labs and try to launch Mask AI, watch what happens. I get this message here, cannot proceed, background layers cannot be used. Please create a duplicate layer. And I'll click OK. So what I'd have to do is create a duplicate layer. And now I can come here and, and click on Filter. And now Topaz Labs. And now I can launch Mask AI. Now, this is what Mask AI looks like after it's been launched from Photoshop as a plugin. But uh, what I want to draw your attention to is up here. See where it says Topaz Mask AI up in the menu here? Click this and go to Preferences. This should be uh, pretty much the way your preferences look, uh, provided uh, you haven't changed them when you originally purchased Mask AI. Now, mine may look a little bit different because I did make my changes right away, and I will show you the settings that I highly recommend that you use for Mask AI, but I want to start out with showing you the default settings, okay? You, this will probably be uh, check to yes, the allow anonymous data collection. I shut mine off, but that's up to you if you want to let them collect data from you. And it'll have this default save as uh, suffix mask on it. I left that on. If you're going to run Mask AI as a standalone, it'll uh, put a, that mask suffix on your files that you save. I don't run Mask that way, Mask AI that way. I always use it from Photoshop, so that's not a concern to me. But you can leave that or change it. And then the Tri Map Opacity. You have a choice here. It's a drop down menu. Um, and I'm not sure. It may be defaulted to 50%. I uh, turned mine down to 30%. But you have different levels that you can change it to here. And then you have uh, a default tri-map color. You could have it come on. See how it's a green keep screen right now? You could have it come on as a red screen, a cut screen, or a blue screen, which makes no sense to me to make it as a compute screen. So I left mine at the default setting of a green screen, and I like that. And by default, I'm pretty sure it's going to come in Photoshop, Auto Create Layer, Unchecked, and Photoshop, Save to Layer Mask, Unchecked. Okay, and I'll get into this in a little bit here. And then advanced preferences. I believe it'll be, uh, it may be defaulted at CPU. So if your mask AI is running slow and you have a later model computer, you definitely want to click GPU for graphic graphics processor. You, you definitely want to have that turned on. Okay, let me go ahead and close this. And now let's uh, work with making a mask here and I'll show you how it outputs the result. And remember, this tutorial is about how to set up Mask AI for ultimate performance. So it's not about masking, so I'm not really teaching you how to mask on this tutorial here. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and mask out this cat here. I'm just going to come over here to Auto Detect Subjects and give that a click and let it do its thing. And I'm not worrying about how the mask looks. I'm not going to refine the mask or anything like that. So let me go ahead and just, uh, I'm in Mask Mode AI. I'm just going to click on Compute Mask. And now our cat is cut out. And at this point, say I want to send this result back into Photoshop. When I click apply here, watch what happens. Let me isolate this layer, the mask AI layer that came back right here so you can see what has happened here. Here's what it looks like. I have this cat cut out on a transparent background. 
So I have no layer mask or anything. Now that is honestly not the way I like to um, have my image sent back. I like to have this cat intact, the image fully intact, and a layer mask that cuts out the background. At this point, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just delete this layer right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a copy of the background layers. Just, and the only reason I'm doing that is so I can come back into Mask AI. And now I'm going to show you how I like to set up Mask AI. Let's go up to the Topaz Mask AI menu and open up the preferences again. Now I'm only concerned with uh, two of these options in here. Photoshop, Auto Create Layer. I'm going to check that on. And that basically is a really cool feature because when you're in Photoshop, you don't have to uh, do that duplicate layer thing. It'll automatically do it for you. And I really appreciate that. I like that. And I highly recommend that you set yours up this way. And then the other option, Photoshop, save to a layer mask. This, instead of giving you that, uh, like this cat was cut out right with that transparent background, you'll see the image with a mask AI layer mask next to it. Now this is important. Um, this effect won't take place until the next time I open it. So I'm gonna close this here and I'm not gonna go ahead and um, cut the background out yet. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this because this will not take effect yet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this background copy because now with my new preferences, I have it set up that Mask AI will automatically duplicate my background for me, which is really cool, right? So now when I come up here, and click on filter and go to mask AI. Notice right here it made, it duplicated that layer for me. So that's a, that's a nice little time saver for you. Now here we are inside of mask AI. So let's now, let's run that scenario again where I go ahead and auto detect my subject. And I'll just compute the mask. And again, I'm not gonna refine it or do anything like that to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and click apply. And now you'll notice the image is intact and it's got the mask AI generated mask right next to it. So if I option click the mask, you can see that mask. So that's pretty cool. And the way I, reason I like to do it this way is because, hey, if I made a mistake, if I missed something when I was refining it in mask AI, I can fix it on this layer mask here. I just have to paint with black and white paint and fix things up, which is a really, really nice feature. And that's why I like to do it this way. Now what I want to show you with my new preference setup is what happens when you blur a background or add a sky to an image or something like that or change out the background and use uh, Mask AI to do a composite. So let me go ahead and delete this layer because I really don't need it. And now let's go ahead and launch uh, Mask AI again. Again, I'll auto detect the subject. Now I have my blue uh, compute brush here. I'm just going to draw a line across here and a line across here because I want to keep the uh, foreground intact here. And I'm going to get a green brush and just paint this area right in here like so. And let me get a green bucket here and click right here and fill this green. This area back here is red. And now let's go ahead and compute the mask. I'm using the AI model again. And now let's say I wanted to uh, blur the background. So I'll click on background and click on blur. We'll just uh, blur that background. I'll just give it a little extra blur here, like so. All right, and I'll click apply. Now when I click apply, I'm, go I'm going to be given two options. Do I want it to go back as a transparent? Now that'll go back with the image intact with a layer mask attached to it that Mask AI has generated. Or if I click composite, it'll go back with this blurred background. There will still be a layer mask attached to it, but it'll be a white reveal all layer mask. And you'll see that here in a second. So let me click composite. Now here we are back in Photoshop. And like I said, there is our blurred layer. Let me click this uh, layer off. As you can see, the blur is actually on the image itself. And there's a white reveal all layer mask. Now you may ask yourself, why do I have this white layer mask here? And the reason for that is you can go ahead and paint black paint on it and uh, bring back some of the background if you wanted. See, like right here. Now remember, I didn't do any refining. So there's a mess up right here, right? So if I click on this layer mask and if I get my brush and paint with some black paint, I can reveal that little section right there. This is what I mean by being able to fix things up. 
So I can get in here and change things and work with that layer mask and it's a beautiful thing right there. Whenever I purchase a new piece of software, I always like to go up into the preferences of that software and set things up uh, according to the way I think it's going to work best for me. Now, the preference settings that I showed you today for Topaz Mask AI, I think they are really good and I highly recommend that you uh, use these uh, preferences, okay? So, uh, because with these uh, preferences that I gave you, you're going to have a layer mask. It's going to duplicate your layer for you uh, and things like that. You're not going to have a transparent uh, image when it comes back into Photoshop. So, I think it's a really good way of working. And this method is mainly if you're working with a uh, Photoshop uh, workflow and using mask ai as a plugin hey i hope you enjoyed this tutorial today if you did please give it a like and share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe and click that bell notification icon and then every time i upload a new tutorial you'll be notified about it i want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with dave kelly i'll see you all right here next time but until then happy editing